of 2024 was stacked with games, particularly in the month of March. And after the partner showcases from both Nintendo and Xbox, we now have a better idea of what the second quarter of this year looks like. I'll go over what I think are the interesting releases or the ones you should look out for. And I'll list the release dates on the bottom of the screen. So let's start with the first month of the second quarter, April. Botany Manor is a puzzle game where you raise and tend to flowers, and by doing so progress through the story. It is a very chill game. A demo was available to play in the last Steam Next Fest, and while I couldn't find time to play it, I did hear good things about it. Children of the Sun is another puzzle game, but instead of a calming gardening experience, you are using psychic powers to guide a single bullet to kill those who wronged you. This one was also available in the last Steam Next Fest. Click above to check what I thought of it. On the same day, Gigantic Rampant Edition will launch. It was a very surprising announcement, but I wonder what are the developers' expectations. Once a multiplayer game dies, it is very hard to release it again and be successful, even if there is less money involved. A week later, Grounded will release in other consoles. At this point, I think everyone who wanted to play Grounded already did. But if you haven't, this is your chance. On April 23, there will be a double release. So Coden fans will get Euden Chronicles, but the game that has my interest is Tales of Kenzera. So, the demo was available on the last Steam Next Fest, and I had a lot of fun with it. It is a metroidvania with heavy inspiration from African folklore. Another Crab's Treasure is another Souls-inspired game, but instead of a dark fantasy, the setting is a cartoony coral in the sea. The main difference is that the player will have to use shells and trash dispersed around the world to use as armor. On the 26th we have the biggest launch of the month, Stellar Blade releases for the PS5. I wish the game would be on PC as well, but given how exclusivity deals work, I guess I'll have to wait a few months at least. Finally, on the same day as Stellar Blade comes Sandland, a game based on the manga of same name from Akira Toriyama. The gameplay videos weren't very impressive, but the story trailer in the future games showcase managed to bring some attention back. I wonder how much will the passing of Toriyama affect this game's sales. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. May opens with the launch of Endless Ocean Luminous. Play the first one very briefly so I can't talk much about it, but good for Switch players. Afterwards, we'll get a two weeks rest with no major releases, which will end with the PC port of Ghost of Tsushima. I'm looking forward to it. If in April Sony got a big game for itself, in May it will be Xbox turn with the release of Hellblade 2. This game has been in development for a long time, and I hope it is successful, but for me the day will be more important because of the launch of Paper Trail. This is a puzzle game where you fold the environment like paper to progress through it. I also covered it in a previous Steam Next Fest. Afterwards, Switch owners will see the release of Paper Mario Tales on Year Door Remake, and World of Goo 2 will be out for Switch and PC. Finally, the month of May ends with the relaunch of Multiverses. Let's see if they can get the game right this time, and hope WB doesn't go retarded again with his decisions on the gaming department. June will be a slow month with mostly small releases, which means that the big DLC planned for that month will have an empty lane for it. I was going to talk about Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, wondering if Atlus would stick to their guns and release it on the same day as the long-awaited Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree. But just as I was writing it, Atlus announced they are changing the date, releasing it one week earlier than initially announced. It was the right call. SMT is not big enough to fight Elden Ring, and releasing shortly after it wouldn't alleviate the problem. A few days later, a new Monkey Ball game, Banana Rumble, launches for the Switch. Sega was smart with the release here as well. Switch only players ain't gonna play Elden Ring, so releasing Monkey Ball on the Switch as a counter programming works. The second quarter of this year is slimmer than the first quarter especially June, which will be a very thin month, at least for me, so I hope I can get some of my backlog done. I haven't managed to post more videos because this year has been very busy for me, but I hope I can go back to a steady schedule soon. So if you want to add something that I forgot or think it is interesting, comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, 
subscribe, and I'll see you around.